Good morning. Good morning. We're just easing in, yeah. Good morning. Good morning. I know the microphone is on. <laughs> yeah, we need a, a gong. We need a gong. <laughs> Oh, that was effective. That was very effective. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the service of worship at First United Methodist Church of Sanford. My name is David. I'm one of the pastors here. We're delighted to have you here in person or online this morning. We are uh, happy to see you and happy to be with you. I want to turn your attention to the bulletin this morning. We've got quite a few announcements that I'm going to have to set up over here uh, to talk through all really uh, amazing opportunities and cool stories that, to share with you. The first is you'll see an, an insert in your bulletin for an event called Bounty. Uh, this is a, an event put on by our beloved Picnic Project. Um, they are hosting an event on the 13th of November uh, at Dee's Brothers Brewing. It's a way to raise funds for them, raise awareness, but it's also really cool. You know Mark and Ryan, you know they don't just do an event. They do these really cool, very powerful, meaningful events, and we're going to have local food vendors and live music and telling the story of the Picnic Project and supporting the causes that they are continuing to adapt and move and change and, and influence in our, in our community. So um, there's information on the flyer. Uh, it is at Dee's Brothers Brewing. There will also be non-alcoholic options for you. Uh, and if you want to get tickets or donate to the cause, there's an opportunity to do that on the bottom. And you get the website uh, information. Please do check that out. And if you can't make it or you want to come and want to bring more, please do. The goal is to get 300 people there. Uh, and we are well on our way to do that. Um, I know of at least two people that will be there. Um, and so we would invite you and invite your friends uh, to come out. It should be a great evening uh, of celebration and uh, for a good cause. So take a look at that. Um, one other thing you'll see, we, our, our flood buckets, our cleaning kit buckets continue to grow. If that's something that you feel inclined to give towards, that you do have a list in your, in your bulletin there of what we are collecting. Uh, I think we may have met our goal. We are one shy of our goal, uh, and we're only two weeks in, folks. So we're going to blow right past that, I'm sure. Um, kind of a cool story here. A lot of times when we do these buckets, um, it can feel very out there. Uh, we're, we're doing this for, for them, this sort of ambiguous them. But we heard a story this week of a, of a member here at this church who has a family member in New Smyrna Beach that was flooded out. And that family member received a flood bucket from the United Methodist, for, from UMCOR. And uh, that family member texted the church member and said, I just got a flood bucket. I didn't even know that I needed all this stuff, but, but here it is. What a, what a gift. And uh, so that was really cool that, you know, this, this work is not ambiguous. This work is not uh, totally uh, for someone else. This is for our community. This is for our region. And so I would continue to encourage us to, to, be, in, to be encouraged by stories like that, to know that our work does make a difference and to know that um, there's more work to do. Uh, so please con consider uh, donating or giving a, a cleaning kit if that is something that you feel led to do. Speaking of that kind of vein of disaster recovery, uh, we did meet some folks from FEMA this week. They came by the church and gave us flyers and let us know that if you or someone you know is seeking assistance, um, there's obviously lots of gaps uh, in, in coverage and insurance and all of that stuff uh, during this disaster. If that's something that you need information about, we do have flyers and we're happy to hand them out. Um, please come find us after the service. You may already have been uh, uh, approached with this information, but if it's not, uh, the, they were reaching out to faith communities to get us to reach out to our constituents so that everyone uh, knows how to get the help that they so desperately need. Um, one quick reminder, um, we will have a charge conference this Tuesday night at 6.30 here in the sanctuary, right, in the sanctuary. Um, Yes, good, uh, confirmed. Um, 
We're actually hosting uh, at least one other church throughout the day. The way that uh, our district superintendent's doing it this year is he's got sites and he's doing multiple charge conferences in a day. And so we'll have other churches here on campus throughout the day on Tuesday. But our charge conference for First United Methodist Church of Sanford is 6.30 p.m. on Tuesday evening. If you've not been to a charge conference, this is the administrative work of the church. This is where we nominate uh, new members into leadership. This is where we uh, approve budgets. This is where we do the work that we're called to as the local congregation. It can be a little bit administrative in nature, but it is vital to the life of the church. And you see uh, in the announcement in your bulletin that everyone is welcome, but only uh, professing ch- current professing ch- uh, church members can vote. So if you're not a church member, uh, this is a great opportunity to become a church member. If you want to do a new member class, we can talk about that later, but only church members can vote uh, at the charge conference. And again, that is Tuesday night at 6.30. And then the final announcement is, we've been announcing this for a couple of weeks now, but tonight we'll begin uh, a a new experience of a worship service. At 5.30 in McKinley Hall, we will have uh, a modern worship service, and that's a lot of words that uh, modern is kind of a a charged word, but just a different approach to worship. Be a different style of music, conversational approach to the sermon, lots of emphasis on community and hospitality. If that's something that you're interested in, you, do, you have questions and you're curious, please come out tonight at 5.30. We will be doing this on a weekly basis. So we kick off tonight, uh, and uh, we will continue to go every week. Um, and so that's going to be a cool opportunity. But that's going to start tonight, 5.30 uh, in McKinley Hall. I'll invite you to continue to look at the bulletin for upcoming events and opportunities uh, in our community and in our congregation. But for now, let's take a moment. Let's take a breath as we find ourselves fully immersed in the Spirit of God, as we come to this place, heart, mind, body, and soul, to worship God. Will you join me in the call to worship as printed in your bulletin? God asks Moses, what is in your hands? And helps Moses to see his true calling. God asks us the same. What is in your hands? Help us, God, to see how we can find our truest selves in you. Open our ears, our eyes, our hearts, and our imaginations. Let us worship God. Will you pray with me? Holy and loving God, we welcome you here now. Lord, by the power of your Holy Spirit, illumine our hearts, our minds, our spirits, and our imaginations. God, open us up to see what it is that you are doing in our midst, to see how it is that you are calling us forward, to see the goodness and the glory of God in this place and on the faces of our neighbors. God, move in us, challenge us, inspire us this day and always. Through Christ's name we pray. Amen. As we come together in worship, as we ask God to come into our midst, let's Amen. 
continue to stand, I'll invite you to share together today the Apostles' Creed number 882 together. The Apostles' Creed number 882. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. to turn and greet your neighbor this morning. I know. I probably the guy yelled at. Yeah, that's okay. Our first Our first reading this morning comes from the book of Exodus, chapter 4, verses 1 through 13. Exodus 4, chapters 1 through 13. Moses answered, What if they do not believe me or listen to me and say, The Lord did not appear to you? Then the Lord said to him, What is that in your hand? A staff, he replied. The Lord said, Throw it on the ground. Moses threw it on the ground, and it became a snake, and he ran from it. Then the Lord said to him, 
Reach out your hand and take it by the tail. So Moses reached out and took hold of the snake, and it turned back into a staff in his hand. This, said the Lord, is so that they may believe that the Lord, the God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has appeared to you. Then the Lord said, put your hand inside your cloak. So Moses put his hand into his cloak, and when he took it out, the skin was leprous. It it had become as white as snow. Now put it back into your cloak, he said. So Moses put his hand back into his cloak, and when he took it out, it was restored like the rest of his flesh. Then the Lord said, if they do not believe you or pay attention to the first sign, they may believe the second. But if they do not believe those two signs or listen to you, take some water from the Nile and pour it onto the dry ground. The water you take from the river will become blood on the ground. Moses said to the Lord, pardon your servant, Lord. I have never been eloquent, neither in the past nor since you have spoken to your servant. I am slow of speech and tongue. The Lord said to him, who gave human beings their mouths? Who makes them deaf or mute? Who gives them sight or makes them blind? It is it not I, the Lord? Now go, I will help you speak and will teach you what to say. But Moses said, pardon your servant, Lord. Please send someone else. The word of God for the people of God. I'd like to invite the children down for a children's moment. Is there here? Here, let's go in the middle. Good morning. I've got a question for you. What are you passionate about? Great follow-up question. What does passionate mean? Who knows what passionate means? I would define passion as something that gives you energy beyond reason. When you're passionate about something, it's something you would wake up for. It's something that you would do for work without ever getting paid for it. What are you passionate about? Moses. Um, I think, like, just, um, like, going to work without getting paid. You're you're passionate about going to work without getting paid? Okay. (laughs) All right. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Maybe don't tell a lot of people that. Okay. But, okay, that's fine. What, what are you guys passionate about? What do you love to do? What is it? Laundry. Laundry. Ah, man, that's a, there's a calling right there. I love that. I love that. That's amazing. What are, so I think this is a really important question because a lot of times we think, gosh, what, what am I supposed to do with my life? What is God asking me to do with my life? And I think it's a re- that's a really big question. And we're going to see this question. We just heard it in Scripture. Moses has been asked in Scripture, God says to Moses, go and set my people free from slavery. And Moses goes, I'm sorry, what's that now? You want me to do what? He said, I don't have the gifts. I don't have any of the things that I have uh, that I need to do this job right. And, and God asks this really important question. He says, what is in your hand? And what he's telling Moses is that he says, you've already got the gifts that you need to do the work that God is asking you to do. So I want to tell you about a very important part of your body. I know everyone's really excited about this. It's the pinky toe. How many people love their pinky toe? How many people have ever thought about their pinky toe until this moment? Right. We don't think about our pinky toe often, but the pinky toe is actually one of the most responsible parts for our balance. If you didn't have a pinky toe, it would be much more difficult to balance. Now, I don't love my pinky toes at all, okay? I'm not going, oh, look, I've got the greatest pinky toes in all the land. But they're so important. And I think that that's a really important thing to remember. We're going to hear a scripture later that talks about the body of Christ. And it actually says this later in scripture. It says, you know, some people are are like a foot, and some people are like the eyes, and some people are like the nose. And it says, you can't live without all the parts together. If you just had eyes, what good would that be? You could see everything, but you couldn't walk or talk or listen. If you just had feet, you could go places, you could get somewhere, but you couldn't do anything when you got there. You wouldn't know when you arrived. So we need all the parts of the body. And I want to encourage you in this way. I think each of us 
has specific gifts and passions that we love inside of our hearts, whether it's helping people or doing certain tasks around the house or just encouraging people through art or music or kind words. And we need each other to do that. Because think about this. If you had all of your body parts except for a foot, what would happen? You would, you would um, like trip every single time you would stand up. Yeah, you couldn't walk as well as you normally could. You would limp everywhere you go. And if we feel like God has given us passions and we don't use them, it's kind of like we're allowing the body of Christ to limp along. So I want to think, dream big. Dream big because God has given each of you some incredible gifts and we already saw those. Remember when you guys led us in the children's moments? Those were, we already saw those gifts, right? God has given you some amazing gifts and God is calling you to use them. They may not always make sense. It may be like the pinky toe, like how am I gonna, what is this even gonna do? But without our pinky toes, we're all off balance. And without you using your gifts, we're all off balance. So may we have the courage to live into our gifts. May we have the courage to listen to God in some amazing and powerful ways. Okay, can we pray? Jesus, we love you so much and we're so grateful for the ways that you've designed each one of us in a unique and beautiful way. God, empower us to see the giftedness that you have given us. It may not always make sense. We may not think we can't do it on our own and God, maybe that's the point. We need one another. We need the entire community, the entire body to do the work that's called to, for us. But Lord, let us play our part. Let us do our role and let us live into our calling with great boldness and great love. It's in Jesus' name that we pray, amen. Thank you, guys. I'll invite you now to turn in your bulletin to the prayer request sheet that we have listed here. Um, just a note that if you are ever a person who is wanting prayer, know that you can add your name or the name of your loved ones to the list just by um, emailing or calling the front office. Um, we, we take very seriously our call to pray. I'll invite us now to pray together. I'll um, share different categories and you can share aloud or silently any names that might be on your heart. And then uh, in the end of each section, we'll share, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Holy God, we come to you this morning with extraordinary gratitude. As we look around at the gifts that are in our hands, the gifts that are in our community, in our congregation, in our world, the gifts that our children are, that all the lives of people who are a part of this congregation are, Lord, we are overwhelmed. We are grateful that you are a God who knows what we need before we ask, and a God who makes space for us to ask, to lay our burdens at your feet, and to share the weight of all that we carry with you. Lord, we lift up to you this morning prayers for all those who are seeking healing in mind, in body, in soul. Lord, we lift up those who are seeking a diagnosis or undergoing treatment. Everybody who is grieving or who is trying to figure out what it is that's going on in their body or their heart. Lord, we ask for all of these prayers for healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. God, we pray for wisdom and discernment in all of life's questions. 
For all of us who came today because we have something burning, a question in our heart, Lord, we pray that you would give us wisdom and guidance. For all the decisions that are to be made, all the places that seem difficult to navigate, for everybody who's looking for the next step, we lift up these prayers for discernment. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we lift up prayers for all those who are lonely, for everybody who feels far from the people that they love in distance or in feeling. God, we pray for those who are deployed, all those who work far from home, for everybody who is in our nursing care facilities, everybody in the foster care system and those who care for the kids for those in our jails and prisons. God, for all of us who struggle with loneliness, we lift up these prayers to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. God, we pray for our enemies. We pray for the people that we just don't understand and the people who don't understand us. We pray for people that we don't like, people who don't like us, who have wished us harm and done us harm, and for all those that we have harmed. We pray for our enemies. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And God, we lift up to you all that is to be celebrated, all that is good, right, and holy, all that we have seen, all that we have known of your kingdom here already on earth. Lord, we celebrate all of the ways that your goodness and your justice, your mercy and your kindness have been shown in the community and around the world for all the ways where we have gotten to see humans at their best and where by the power of your spirit, we have even been made more than we ever could have been on our own. God, we lift up to you these prayers of gratitude. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, we leave all of these at your feet because we know that you are God and we are not. We celebrate all that's good. We mourn all that is heartbreaking and we ask that you would give us the capacity to carry each other's burdens on the best and the worst days. Lord Jesus, shape us to be more like the people that you have created us to be and give us the courage to say yes to your calling. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let us now pray together the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us now continue our service of worship with the giving of our tithes and offerings.
God, as we long to hear and see and find our true calling, we know that we are found most fully in you. God, you are the source of all good gifts and the source of goodness and bounty and abundance that we learn from. God, we ask that you bless this giving, this offering. Let it be a blessing for those in our community. And God, bless us to be a blessing as well. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. The scripture reading will be from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 through 14. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in every one, it is the same God at work. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one, there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom to another a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by that one Spirit, to another miraculous powers, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and still to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same Spirit, as he distributes them to each one just as he determines. Just as a body, though one, has many parts, but all of its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one Spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, and we were all given one Spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. The Word of God for the people of God. Okay, I'm going to ask you a question you don't have to answer out loud, but I do want you to answer at some point today in your heart, and maybe to somebody else. Have you ever said no to God? Well, I said no to God once. Um, Actually, probably a lot of times I've said no or um, no thank you. Uh, I try to be polite about it. (laughs) But pretty, pretty vividly, I remember praying and explaining to God when I started to sense that I might be called to ministry, um, I tried to tell God, you know, that women didn't preach in my world. And also, I didn't have anything to say anyway, and being a pastor seemed boring and totally irrelevant to the community, and I really wanted to love and serve the community. I was in the process of discerning a call to ministry um, in the United Methodist Church, and in our process, they make you, we have methods for everything, you know. They make you read a little book, and then a bigger book, and then a bigger book with a mentor, and you do some activities, and in one of the activities, you had to go through and read the call stories of lots of people in Scripture. So, busy in my heart saying, no, thank you, and I'd rather not, and could you please ask someone else, and I'm not qualified for this, and I'm still not, Uh, I read the story, the call story of Moses, and I heard God say to Moses in that story, and also kind of to me, who is it that gave human beings mouths? And then Moses responds, like almost on beat, okay, okay, fine, yeah, you're God, and you gave mouths, but, but could you please call somebody else? Maybe you are also trying to figure out where God is calling you. Maybe who God is calling you to be or where God is calling you to serve or learn or grow or change. Maybe you've been running from something. Maybe you've said no thank you politely a few times. Maybe you have asked asked God to send somebody else. Well, y'all, I want you to know you are in good company today. Us and all of the heroes of the faith have walked this journey, and we are not alone. Let us pray. Oh, Lord Jesus, it takes some courage to open our ears. Mm, It even takes courage to listen. Help us, God, to listen. 
Amen. Well, you know, we're in a series talking about God's will and hearing from God, how it is that we understand God's calling. And so two weeks ago, I'm just going to keep reviewing this in case you were gone. That's all right. Two weeks ago, we uh, remembered together a pastor, Leslie Weatherhead, who wrote a book on God's will, God's intentional, circumstantial, and ultimate will, the way that uh, God intended things, the way that God works even when things are not as God intended, and how God is getting us to where God is going, right? That's the kind of breadth of God's will that we talked about. Last week, we heard some stories of God speaking to people, and those people being confused, confounded, unsure of what they heard, needing a little help from the people around them. We talked about how God might speak to us through our community, through the words of wise people, somebody who might be your Eli, like Samuel had. Or how you might hear God speak through scripture, tradition, reason, and experience, our kind of Wesleyan quadrilateral that we discussed. And in the words of those people who know us really well. This week, we are talking about how God might be calling you. Now, I want to I be extra precise here. I don't mean like you, and maybe that applies to two or three of us here. I mean precisely, exactly you. Today, we heard Moses' call story. Now, um, again, Disney did us a favor. They made a great movie about this that gets mm, a lot of it right. So you probably know the story of Moses' calling, And if you do, you know, Moses was, uh, he floated down the river in a basket. He was rescued by by Pharaoh's uh, wife, that he was raised in the palace. Um, And then his life takes a little bit of a turn. Where we find him today, Moses is at the place where um, he has run. Moses has now become a murderer escaping from Egypt because he had killed an Egyptian who was mistreating an Israelite. And Moses had not exactly planned on returning to the place where he could get in a lot of trouble, as I'm sure many of us don't. I had a friend friend once tell me, I got a parking ticket in St. Augustine, so I'll just never go back there. (laughs) Moses is not interested in returning to Pharaoh's house. He has found a new life. He's with the Midianites. He is uh, tending to his, not the Midianites, sorry. Uh, He is tending to his father-in-law's flock. And they're kind of, uh, he's out there wandering like tending to flocks do, right? He, He wanders up onto the mountain and he sees a burning bush there. This is before the text that we read today. God speaks to him in that burning bush. And he hears this sense of like, deep and intimate connection with God. Now then we read about the way that God today in our text called Moses to participate in the work of freeing the Israelites from enslavement. Now I understand this is probably not the scenario of your calling, right? Maybe we aren't seeing lots of burning bushes. If you are, good for you. I've never seen one. Um, But my guess is that even if we haven't seen that, there is something deeply meaningful about us learning from the people who have been called before us. One thing that I think is essential for us to gather from Moses' story today is, first of all, that we cannot do it alone. So, God calls Moses to confront Pharaoh and say, let my people go, gives him a bunch of really cool tricks to do to prove that he's really speaking for God. And he says, you know, God, I, I, <laughs> I'd rather not. And eventually he says, God, I'm, I'm not great at speaking and I feel like you asked me to talk, so that's going to get a little complicated. When God explains to Moses what to do, Moses hesitates because he's pretty sure not only that he doesn't have the skill, but also that nobody is going to believe him. Did you catch what God said? Dave mentioned it. This is kind of the highlight for today. God says to Moses, what is in your hand? I want us to hear in that there's kind of a nod toward what is already 
in your hand. That's a staff that Moses had carried through his flock tending and throughout lots of other things. What is already in your hand, Moses? Now, we're going to come back to this later, but I want you to ask yourself that. What, what's already in my hand? So for now, I want us to notice that Moses has something in his hand. He has a staff, but he doesn't have all the skills necessary to do the job well. He points that out, right? I'm, I'm not great at speaking. I'm not sure they're going to believe me. There are some other things that I probably should have if you're going to ask me to do this task. But this is important because Moses has something in his hand. He doesn't have everything. And because of that, he must rely on God and other people. If you can do it alone, if you have no need for faith in God or help from other people, it is probably not a calling. It may be a good thing for you to do. I'm not telling you not to do it, right? Go for it. But what we see in Scripture is that God's way of operating often weaves us together and or requires a deep and abiding dependence on the Holy Spirit. We don't love dependence, right? We like to think that we are independent. But I want us to hear that a calling from God makes us utterly dependent on the Holy Spirit. God is at work using the body of Christ to bring the kingdom of God, and that kingdom already has, this is important, that kingdom already has a king. There are no solo heroes in the body of Christ, and so do not be surprised when what you are called to inherently requires you, maybe a knee, to depend also on the foot and the ankle and the hip. Second, I want us to notice that calling throughout Scripture is not only for pastors. We talk a lot about discerning a call to ordain ministry, and that is, of course, a part of it. Some of you in this room, I just, I have to say this out loud, some of you in this room may be called to ordain ministry, and if you think that that's something that God's doing in your heart, let's talk. But I also want you to hear if you're not called to ordain ministry, that does not mean that you are not called. Calling is for everybody. Esther, Abraham, Deborah, David, Mary, they all had distinct experiences of call, but were called to serve in different ways than like priestly ways, performing sacrifices or serving in the temple. Abraham and Sarah were called to move, to follow God to new places, to establish God's community, which had inherently in it the call to bless all families and nations of the earth. Esther saves God's people by using her close proximity to power and her good looks. Deborah was called to serve as a judge in a time when people were corrupt. A lady judge, did you catch that? Okay. David was called to serve as king and defend God's people with a stone. Mary was called to bear Christ, both physically and in a spiritual sense, right? Each of these people participated in the work of God in the world, but they weren't priests or pastors. Please do not think that calling is reserved only for putting on robes and blessing communion elements. That is not how this God works. God is calling all sorts of folks for all sorts of things, and we have each got to have the courage to tune our hear, ear and to hear what it is that God is calling us to. One woman that I know was called to leave her very important job at Bell South. Y'all remember Bell South? She sold everything that she owned and worked as a missionary with children in Tallahassee, Florida. One person I know got clean, lived on someone's porch, and felt called by God to serve the poor, even though he was, at that moment, poor himself. One person I knew growing up felt called to helping people clean their homes because of the inherent link uh, between our mental health and a sense of order in our lives. 
This woman made it a practice. She was professionally a cleaner, but she made it a practice in her business to help tired single moms at little or no cost uh, to, to care for their homes. My own grandfather tells a story of his calling. He said when he was growing up, um, he went to his pastor and said, I don't know if I'm called to be a pastor or to run a business. His pastor noted in their conversation that he could affect as many lives as a good business owner as he could as a pastor. Now, my grandfather gives me grief all the time about my bleeding heart. But I want you to know that when Hallmark holiday season rolls around, that man will drop a tear long before I will. He'll also offer a second chance to people who need it. He'll hire somebody who's down on their luck. And he will give away his hard-earned money like nobody I know. You may be lucky enough to have your calling and your work overlap, but if your calling doesn't make enough money to live on, y'all, that doesn't mean you get to get out of it. You say yes, and then find some other way to keep food on the table. All of us are called. Third, I want us to notice in this story of Moses and in the other scriptural stories that when you are working in your calling with God and other people, you will be able to do more than you ever thought possible. I don't know if you noticed in the story that Ryan read that Moses takes the staff from his hand. God says, throw it on the ground. It'll become a, it becomes a snake. And then Moses is like, whoa, that's a snake. <laughs> Moses drew back from the snake made from the very staff that he had carried his whole entire life. This is true actually for a lot of people in scripture. God says that you will be able to do amazing and miraculous things to these people and then all of a sudden they do them and they're like, whoa, wait a second, what just happened? You see, this, this happens now, even in our time and place, when God calls people together, united with the power of the Holy Spirit, are able to do more than they ever could have imagined and more than they would have been able to do on their own. You see this when teams serving in disaster zones manage to find resources for families in crisis faster than anyone thought might be possible. You see this when doctors and medical teams perform a life-saving procedure that has never been done before with the help of researchers and incredible nurses and trusting patients. You see this happen when businesses that put the community first, they blow up overnight and that platform causes them to elevate the reason they started the business to begin with. You see it when little tiny churches with tiny budgets and leaking roofs try to serve the community in ways that defy what the numbers may have predicted. When you say yes to God, you work together with others that God has called, and you may find yourself taken aback by what God is doing in your midst as well. All right, so how do you know where God might be calling you? A great place to start is to figure out what is in your hand. We heard today also from Corinthians, there are different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. Now to each one, the manifestation of the spirit is given for the common good for the common good. I want us to hear that what's in your hand, the gifts that you have been given by the power of the Holy Spirit, is for the common good. You may have been praised your whole life for your musical talents, for your good writing skills, for your ability to sell anything, or for your wise counsel. And I want you to hear, all of that is awesome and yes, you are truly the bearer of those gifts. But y'all, we cannot forget that each of us did not conjure those gifts ourselves. You may have practiced, 
You may have worked to perfect it. You may have spent Malcolm Gladwell's 10,000 hours becoming an expert. But the breath in your lungs and the smarts in your head and the natural talent that you started with, that came straight from God. If you've been through the new member class here, you've heard us talk a lot about this. We are given gifts from God for the purpose of serving the church and the world. We are given gifts from God for the purpose of serving the church and the world. And if we don't have you using those gifts, we all will suffer. If you bake the best bread on the block, please do not keep that bread to yourself. If you write grants that win hearts and dollars, friends, let me tell you, don't keep that gift to yourself. If you have compassion for days that seems to come from somewhere deep in your soul, that is not simply for you to feel warm fuzzies alone. That is a gift from God, and it's meant for use in the church and the world. So what's in your hand? What is it that God has placed in you for the sake of the kingdom? Ask yourself, what are my gifts of the head? These are some examples. Maybe your intellect or your education. Maybe your wisdom or your sense of vision. Are you a, per a person who can see the thing five years before it happens? That's a gift from God. Maybe discernment. Maybe you're the person who in a room has the gut feeling and you just know. You know what's right, you know what's good, and you know what isn't. Maybe your gift is language. If you are a person who can pick up new languages like that or you already speak multiple languages, that is a gift of the head. That is a gift for the work of the church in the world. Or maybe we, need to also, we also need to be asking ourselves, what are our gifts of the hands? Maybe you can build anything. Maybe you can bring people together. You can make things happen. Maybe you have musical talents or some other sort of talent we don't even know about. Maybe you have particular skills that bring healing in the world. Those would be the gifts of your hands. And then what are your gifts of the heart? Maybe you have an enormous sense of compassion, that you can have compassion on enemies long before anybody else can. Maybe you have a capacity for friendship. You can see people where they are and you can love them right there. Maybe you have a gift and a call to justice. Like, Amos, you saw a plumb line and you are gonna hold us to it. That is a gift of the heart. Or maybe you have an incredible and abiding sense of faith, even in the midst of the storm. That is a gift of the heart. We can wonder and ask and ponder where God is calling us, but a great place to start is with Moses. What do you already have? What are your gifts of the head and the hands and the heart? Where do you see those at work and how is God calling you to use those? One of my favorite theologians, his name is Frederick Buechner. He uh, passed away recently um, and contributed extraordinary amounts to theological conversations and to people's sense of what God's doing in the 20th and 21st century. Frederick Buechner says this. He says, the kind of work God is usually calling you to is the kind of work, A, that you need most to do, and B, that the world most needs to have done. A and B. If you really get a kick out of your work, you've presumably met requirement A. But if your work is writing TV, commercial, TV deodorant commercials, the chances are you may have missed requirement B. On the other hand, if your work is being a doctor in a leper colony, you've probably met requirement B. But if most of the time you're bored and depressed by it, the chances are you've not only bypassed A, but probably aren't helping your patients much either. The kind of work God usually calls you to is the kind of work that you need most to do 
and that the world most needs to have done. He says the place God calls you is to the place where your deep gladness and the world's deep hunger meet. Where your deep gladness and the world's deep hunger meet. I want to invite us to be people who, even if we've said no politely a couple of times to the Lord, who have the courage to say yes to acknowledge what is in our head and our hands and our heart, to know that we are part of a body of Christ, so our call is to be the best eyes or the best toes that we can be, knowing that the whole body of Christ has other gifts that fill in those places of need, and that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we will do more together saying yes to the Lord than we ever could have done apart. Our invitation today is to hear the Lord's calling and maybe to stop asking God to send someone else. As we close today through the final hymn and also after the service, I want to invite us uh, again to have an opportunity of anointing. If you are wrestling with a sense of call in your life and you want somebody to pray with you or you just want some oil on your head and to join the people who have been confused and courageous in the past, then we want to give you the opportunity to know that we join you in that call and that we want to help you say yes, however you're being called. And so we'll invite you, if you are interested, um, to pray, to be anointed today for your calling and to know that the church joins you as you go on that adventure. Will you join us as we close in our final hymn? go forth into the world with what is in our head, our hands, and our hearts, offering that for the sake of the kingdom. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace this day and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>